tough problem involving binomial distributions for you rookie players is one like this. The probability of winning a prize in a game of chance is 0 0.45. So that's P equals 0 0.45. What is the least number of games, that is how many trials do I need to run to ensure that the probability of winning at least twice is more than 0 0.95? All right, so many students who hit this problem for the first time don't even know really where to start. So let's define their distribution. So x is a random variable that's binomially distributed where we're doing n trials with the probability of success being 0 0.45. All right, now let's write out our probability statement. So we want the probability that the random variable is greater than or equal to 2, winning at least twice. Okay, so two or more successes is more than, so is greater than 0 0.95. All right, so the move at this point will be to convert this into what it isn't. And what do I mean by that? Well, the probability that the random variable is greater than or equal to two is actually the same as writing one takeaway, the probability that the random variable is equal to zero plus the probability that the random variable is equal to one. Now, why did we do that? Well, it's gonna be very difficult to count up two, three, four, five, all the way up to an n value that I don't know. So that's gonna be really difficult. Whereas I can count up when the random variable is equal to zero and one and just remove it from this. All right, so this is a much easier way of doing the problem than counting to an unknown n value. Right, and we want that to be greater than 0 0.95. Now let's remove one from both sides. Now let's dump that negative. Okay, and now let's write up what we know about this. Okay, so when we're working out a particular value for the random variable, we can use that formula, NCR, probability of success to the power of R, one take P, N take R. Okay, so look that formula up. That's the one that we're using. Okay, so that's N choose R. So in this case, what we're doing is N choose R, where in this case, it's zero. Okay, so we want zero uh, successes. Now, that's going to be then 0 0.45 to the zero and 0 0.55 to the n take zero, which is just n, plus when it's equal to one, that's n choose one, success to the power of one, fail to the power of n take one, all less than 0 0.05. All right, let's tidy up. So n choose zero is one, 0 0.45 to the power of zero is one. So we're left with 0 0.55 to the n plus, now n choose one is just n because just say that seven choose one, that's seven, eight choose one, eight, n choose one is just n. Now n gets multiplied by 0 0.45 to the power of one. So let's pop that in as the coefficient, then 0 0.55, all raised to the n take one, less than 0 0.05. Right, now it's time to go to the calculator. Okay, so let's whack in that statement. So we're gonna go a solve on this, 0 0.55 to the power of x plus 0 0.45 times x times 0 0.55 to the power of x take one hat, um, key, make sure you bracket up the um, n take one, all of it. And now, uh, idiosyncrasy of the calculator is this will not work for an inequality. So you must use an equal sign on this. Um, and I'll explain to you now how to interpret the results. For more than one solution exists. Now we've got a negative solution here, okay? So um, we're gonna ignore that negative solution. And we're gonna say that in this case, n must be greater than 8.4754 dot 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 dot. Therefore, 
n is equal to 9. So I'll show you what that means now. So now I'll explain how I know that this will be the right value. So I'm going to go over to interactive, distribution and discrete, and I'm going to run binomial CDF. Now my lower value is going to be 2. My upper value um, is going to be 9. Number of trials is going to be 9. Chance of success is 0 0.45. Now what that is saying is it's basically going, we wanted to win at least two games. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, up until the number of trials it's gonna take. And this is suggesting that the number of trials should be n is equal to nine. Okay, so what should happen when I hit okay on this is that I get a number more than 0 0.95. There it is, 0 0.96. And perhaps you can see here that why didn't I go to eight? Okay, because n, that might round to eight. Well, the reason is if I run eight trials of it, what that will do is return a probability that's not gonna be above 0 0.95. In fact, it'll be marginally below. Let's see how far below. Yeah, it's 0 0.93. So n is equal to nine, or we're gonna say nine trials. Okay, uh, in this case, let's give some context specific information least number of games, not nine trials. Let's, um, instead of nine, saying nine trials, let's say nine games. Right, but there's the classic problem. All right, so again, we'll do a similar sort of problem, finding the sample size. So that question there in the previous set of your, section of your notes actually relates to 14C, so finding the sample size. So, this one here, we've got a biased dice is weighted so that the probability of rolling a three is 0 0.4. What are the least number of throws needed so that the probability of rolling at least two, so notice that we're doing at least two threes is more than 60%. Right, so I'm gonna show you three ways to do it, okay? And this is the method that I call the I get it method. It's the exact same method as before. All right, so let's go with X is a binomially distributed random variable, where we don't know how many trials to run, but the chance of success is 0 0.4. All right, so let's write out our probability statement. Probability that the random variable is greater than or equal, so the probability of rolling at least two threes, so two successes, so is going to be more than 60% or 0 0.6. All right, so again, we're gonna use the exact same strategy that we did before, which is one takeaway, probability x equals zero plus probability x equals one, greater than 0 0.6. All right, so now what we're going to do is uh, take one and I'm gonna divide by the negative straight away. Uh, zero point, what's that gonna be? So take one is negative 0 0.4, divide, yeah, 0 0.4. All right, so now what we're gonna do is write our statements up for this using the formula. So that's going to be, remember the formula, NCR, P, R, one take P, N take R. All right, so let's do that. So we got N choose zero, success is 0 0.4, to the zero, fail is 0 0.6 to the uh, n take zero is n plus n choose one, 0 0.4, one, 0 0.6, n take one, less than 0 0.4. All right, clean up shop. So 0 0.6 to the n plus n, 0 0.4, n times 0 0.4 times 0 0.6 to the n take one less than 0 0.4. All right, so let's go to the calc now. You can't solve that one by hand, so don't even sort of worry about using the calc at this point. 0 0.6 to the power of x plus 0 0.4 times x times 0 0.6 to the power of x take one 
um, equals 0 0.4. Remember, you can't use the less than for x. All right, so we're going to discard the negative solution and say that n is greater than 4.5112 dot dot dot. Therefore, n is equal to 5. So 5 throws required. Right, we can test this pretty quickly by using the cumulative function again. So reminder, we go to discrete CDF, where our lower is going to be 2, because it's 2 or more, up to our upper value, which is 5. Number of trials is 5, and the chance of success this time is 0 0.4. Okay. That's a good sign. So it gave us a probability of 0 0.66. We wanted it to be more than 60. Now remember, with four trials, what should happen is it dips below 60. There it is, 52%. All right, so it is five trials. So again, that's definitely correct. Right, here goes method two. This is the out pops the answer method. Now, this will involve a inbuilt program called BPM. Okay, now your calculators don't have that installed, but I will have that installed for you for the exam. Now, BPN was developed by this bloke um, who works for Casio called Charlie Watson. If you YouTube him, um, you'll see heaps of his Casio stuff um, around. He's a, a good entertaining view as well. He's really great at explaining things on the, on the CAS calculator. So he developed BPN, all right? Now, I've got it on this calculator here, and I'm going to show you how to use it. Okay, so the way it works is the program is you type in BPN and then the parameters that you need to pass it, 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 it wants three things off you, okay? So the first thing is P, the second thing is A, and the third thing is K. So your notes need to have this. All right, now what's P? All right, so P is the prob of success. So in this question here, we've got BPN and the probability of success was 0 0.4. All right, the A value. Now the A value um, is the min number of successes. In this case, it was two. So we wanted two or more, all right? And K is the target prob, all right? In this case, it's 0 0.6 or more. All right, so all you do is you feed it those three things, okay? So we're gonna go BPN, 0 0.4 to 0 0.6. And what we can see here is it gives us the value four, it says 52% uh, and five, 66%, okay, therefore five throws gives us the target probability, all right? So that there will be um, enough for a one mark question. And so often, well not often, but this I've seen in recent years is a one mark question. So if it was a two mark question, what I'd be doing is I'd be showing all of this stuff here, okay, more than just um, BPN. But if it's a one mark question, so if this is um, the question here and it has one mark next to it, slam it into BPN and it'll just throw out the five throws result. All right, there's one last method and I'm gonna to have to pause this video to look up how to do it. So what we're going to do for this one here, and I have to admit I'm being a little bit cheeky here. I've got the textbook open on another screen as I'm recording this because I simply don't use this method. Um, so here goes, what we're going to do is use the discrete and binomial CDF feature. Now, what we do is we go, all right, I've got two or more. Okay, so I'm gonna go from two trials. I want you to count up from two up to an upper limit of trials that I don't know what it is. And I also don't know what the number of trials is, but they match each other, they, these two things. Now, the probability of success um, was, I think it was 0 0.4, yes, 0 0.4. So we're going to go 0 0.4. Okay, now what will happen, it's fairly weird this, is it will give you an error. 
Now, usually that's a bad sign, but that's actually a good sign for this method. So we're going to say, all right, I'm going to grab you and copy you. Now, this is going to seem really bizarre, but I'm going to actually go over to graph and table. All right, and what I do is I pop that into Y1. Now, I promise you girls, I haven't been, um, I'm not going crazy here. All right, so this is legitimately what we're going to do. All right, so we're going to pop that into a graph, and then we're going to hit the table of values feature. All right, now here's what happens. So for values of x that are negative, of course it's going to give us an error, okay, because that would be so like saying, oh, I wonder how many or what the probability is if I do this if the number of trials is negative 5. That doesn't make any sense. Now we're getting errors for zero as well, so zero trials, of course that doesn't make sense. It doesn't even make sense for one trials because we want two or more successes, right? So at two or more, finally we start getting a probability. And what we can do is just move through the table until we get a probability over here on the right hand side that's larger than um, uh, 60%. So this one here, we're going to say five trials. Okay, so again, this would be an appropriate method for a one mark question. Okay, because you wouldn't go ahead and explain, oh, um, I um, typed in binomial CDF with X and X, blah, blah, blah. That's not going to get you a second mark. Okay, so this method here would be also an appropriate way to do the problem for one mark. Okay, but again, my least preferred method, I use this one BPN for one mark, but you guys don't have BPN just yet. Or if it's more than one mark, I need to show some sort of working or knowledge about what I'm doing. So I would use this method here. All right, so on to the work there. Okay, so 14C, those questions, plus the chapter review is also fair game. Plus there's a worksheet on there of old VCAR questions.